Good morning, folks. Today in the shop, we have a 2000 Subaru Forester with an NA 2.5. And unfortunately, the prognosis is high oil consumption. I've done a compression test and I've got good even compression on all four cylinders. Uh, nice high compression still. Could be leaking through the valve guide seals, but the amount that I'm seeing is I'm actually filling up cylinder number three with oil enough to cause it to misfire. I pulled the plugs out. All the plugs look fine except for cylinder three. It's really wet and fouled and, and uh, just not looking good. So did a little bit of research. Turns out super common problem with these cars is the oil control ring that's on the piston. So you've got two rings that seal the compression and then one ring that seals the oil from getting into the combustion chamber. Well, these things... Uh, if you have, if you use terrible oil uh, and you wait a long time between oil change intervals, uh, you can get carbon buildup, gunk buildup on the oil control ring. And then what that causes is uh, the oil to be able to slip past the oil control ring and get into the cylinder and burn. So, fortunately, there is something we can do about it. And we can actually pull this motor apart without completely rebuilding it, cracking the cases, and re-ring the motor. Uh, it's a pretty involved job. Um, and I'm probably going to time lapse it and summarize it up in about a couple of minutes, <laughs> which makes it look a lot easier than it actually is. But uh, I'm gonna show you how that's done. So the first order of business is the motor has to come out. Uh, unfortunately, you can't pull the heads. Well, you can, you can pull the heads with the motor inside these cars it's kind of difficult but it's possible um, but in this case we just want to pull the motor because we're going to have to pull the pistons out of the side and you also you can't access the the access holes for the wrist pins uh, to pull the wrist pins out pull those the pistons so so motor's got to come out So finally we have the disassembled short block. Um, looks pretty easy, right? <laughs> well, I gotta say this job is not for the faint of heart. Um, if you're not pretty skilled with working on motors, you should leave this one up to the professionals because it is a very involved job. <laughs> uh, you have to wrestle the heads off without damaging them and then of course getting the wrist pins out without dropping the clips. and. Um, getting the pistons out of the cylinders without scoring them even more. Um, but yeah, uh, it looks like I was actually able to find the issue. So originally what we were seeing is a misfire in cylinder number four, I believe. Um, like I said earlier, I pulled the plug out and it was actually wet and fouled. Um, so this is the piston out of cylinder number four. And as you can see, there's pretty heavy scoring on the skirt. Um, and what this is, is from the factory, these pistons actually had a Teflon coating on the skirts to stop them from rocking as they moved uh, up and down the cylinder. And over time, just from, you know, thousands and thousands of rotations of the motor, uh, the Teflon coating wears off. And what you get is clearance and between the bore and the OD of the, the piston skirts and then as this travels up and down it rocks. Now that beca can become problematic because as you can imagine the oil control ring and the, the piston ring themselves are actually um, spring steel and if you take the, the spring 
steel and you caulk it one way or the other inside the bore, they're no longer sealing uh, inside the cylinder bore. So what you get is every time this thing rocks back and forth, um, you get the oil slipping past the oil control ring and then making its way into the cylinder to burn. So uh, we're going to actually drop these pistons off over at um, Superior Subian Imports uh, in Oregon City. And what they do is they take a knurling tool and a knurl material up on the both sides of the piston skirt and then file the raised edge of the knurl back to the, the size of the bore. And that will actually take up that clearance on the piston skirt and stop it from rocking as it travels. So uh, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so as you can see, we just got all of our parts back from uh, SSI. And this is the knurling that you do on the piston skirts. Uh, and basically what, what that's done is raised a edge here from bulging the material out. Uh, but right now it's an interference, so what we actually have to do is file each uh, piston skirt per cylinder and make it just kind of like a net fit into the cylinder because uh, the tolerance from the factory is about a half thou clearance on these things. So, so that's what we're going to do next. Uh, I've already installed the, the new oil pump and I've already installed the new water pump. Um, and I've cleaned up the head surface and the cylinder bores and stuff, so we're ready to do this and, uh, and get our piston rings on and clocked correctly and, and install our, new, our uh, refurbished pistons here. All the piston skirts are filed to size for the bore that they went into. Um, the pistons are re-ringed, installed, wrist pins and clips are in, um, I've resealed the oil pan. And uh, I think it's time to put the heads on. Okay, so the car runs great. Um, it's always going to stumble initially when the car first starts up because it has to fill up the fuel system, of course. Uh, and I just put a new fuel filter on it, so the pump has to run fuel into the filter and fill it up first. Uh, and then it always, uh, it's, it's going to burn um, what looks like oil, but it's actually, I used ATF to, to um, lube up the engine uh, while I was assembling it. So I, when that's burning off, uh, you'll see that. But other than that, it runs great. It's about a 17 hour job, so kind of a lengthy one. So if you're doing it yourself, make sure you have a, a couple days of downtime with no car. Uh, but all in all, it's, uh, it's done. She runs great.